Welcome to the CMI Creature and Character Rigging series. My name is Simon Payne, and this is my first set of CMI tutorials, so bear with me and I shall try not to err or um too much. I've spent the past 12 years working on feature films, as well as some high-profile commercial campaigns, and I've spent much of that time dedicated to characters, but also led in several other 3D disciplines, and thus I try to utilise some of those pockets of handy tricks and techniques whilst rigging. For this series, we are going from beginning to advanced film production level, covering the main concepts of rigging through to advanced deformation and puppet rigs, modular rigging workflow, speed issues, and working within a development methodology inclusive of setting up Python modules and scripting tutorials. We will focus mostly on Maya, but I will give some point of reference to aspects of soft image equivalents where I feel it is relevant or helpful. Also, I'd like to kindly thank DOS3D in advance for providing us with an excellent set of creature and character models to use for demonstration. So in this first of three DVDs, we'll be covering the key concepts. Some of this may seem obvious to those with some experience with rigging, but there are theories and principles that will guide us through to the following two DVDs, and so it's worth watching this DVD through even if you consider yourself to be an intermediate or advanced level rigger. So our key areas for this session will be a rigging overview and theory, key types of rig manipulation, skeletons and joint orientation, IK and FK, expressions, set driven keys, using hypergraph nodes in our rigs, and controls and connection setups. So we'll look at some rigs in just a moment, but first a point of discussion. Production level rigging as our target. Why? And how is this relevant to the home hobbyist or a commercials boutique or even games companies? Well first, you need to properly understand what the term production quality rigging pertains to. My rigging practice is not something that is set in stone. It evolves and it changes all the time. It is because it is less of a designated workflow and more of a general philosophy. By example, when I switched from the film department of one particular visual effects facility to their commercials department, I was predictably confronted with the assumption of its artists and supervisors that they could not really utilise the powerful tools and workflows developed in the film department on commercials projects. The reason, predictably, was we have a much faster turnaround than film and no time for things that don't work or need months of finesse, etc, etc. My counter-argument is that the turnaround required by film projects is no different from commercials. There are just much more complicated shots, and many more shots, requiring more people over a greater showtime. Individually speaking, each artist's contribution has the same bid time or less than we would bid for the same asset build or shot production in a commercial project. Feature film technology is developed by facilities for this very reason. If it takes 15 days to develop a character in a commercial, it takes the same in film and has a higher quality expectancy. We are always under a lot of pressure by the clients to do more for feature film visual effects in far less time for less money on every project every year, year after year. We work harsh hours very often to stick to those deadlines that are no more forgiving on a per asset basis than commercials. On top of that, the clients for film work are usually more picky and ask for a lot more changes with no additional time or money to achieve those changes. There is only one way around it. Develop tools, pipeline and workflow that support those tight turnarounds and still give you the ability to raise the quality threshold. Make it efficient and incredibly fast, far faster and more powerful and more reliable than the software offers out of the box or with simpler pipelines. If on commercials you only have software out of the box, or a simpler pipeline, don't be surprised that assets are tougher to create in the time frame, or that which you create is a lower quality than you would have made with film department tools. Don't just assume that something that looks awesome is unachievable. Make it achievable, and then there's no problem with using it. Having time to develop is a totally different discussion, but once you have, you can use what you have developed, so there is no reason to be afraid of aiming higher. Thus, the path I will be guiding you down in this rigging series follows the mentality that we aim for the highest quality, 
that which you would regard to be the standard set in the heights of feature film visual effects. Just because you are a hobbyist or a commercials boutique does not mean that you cannot achieve the quality or do it fast enough. And just because the next levels of quality require more complexity and production time on the face of it does not mean it requires more time or risk in reality if you start as you mean to go on and adhere to a sensible pipeline and workflow. Remember also, this takes little effort to set up, as I will show. Even a basic pipeline I'll show you in this series is usually far more than most CG boutiques actually have, or certainly hobbyists.